this course as I said is something to do with current technologies going on. Uh, so I just want to tell you that this course requires understanding or at least some flavor or some interest in physics, chemistry, maths, material science, mechanical, civil, electric, every branch of engineering. And actually that is how actually I like the area because I myself have fabricated the first India chip along with others in TIFR. So we are the first or maybe called pioneers in making India's first chip in 1979-80. So we, that has actually given us impetus to work in this area and you need to know many things. So actually technology should not be taught, technology should be actually done. Then why this course? The course probably is before you enter the lab, these days the technology has become so complex that unless you have a priori values known what to do in the lab, which we say simulations, process simulations, unless you do all your circuit design for the process in, in a, on a computer, you should not enter the lab because things can go awry if you have no idea where to work with. So this course essentially is trying to, uh, we will see what is my objective and uh, as I say 8 years down the line, I mean many years ago I taught, uh, my other students have joined as faculty, now they are professors and they have been uh, actually wanting to teach this course, Ram Gopal Rao for example, uh, he joined in 96 or 98 and he says sir I like to teach this course, I said take it. Then I started a course analog circuits, VLSI analog Then some other person joined and he said I want to teach analog, I said take it. <laughs> then I started a course called RF design, RF uh, VLSI. Then they said some other person Shalab Gupta came last year, he said no so I want to teach, I said take it. <laughs> so now I, I have nothing left to, I have started 5 new courses in, I, in this group. Uh, but somehow I was not allowed to continue for long in many except this technology which I taught 16 years at a trot. Okay. Uh, so it is pleasure for me to come back to area which is most, uh, uh, what I should say, the area which I like most. But in IIT last, for some years now people think I am in circuits. Yeah, I am doing VSI design for last maybe 20 years simply because in India the VSI industry is mostly a design industry there are no fabs and therefore the students find it very easy if they have a design project or design knowledge to get absorbed in those industries which relatively much higher pay scale than any other uh, branch of engineering maybe except the computer science. So this is how we kept working on VLSI design activities. So even those courses have which I started have mother this and people have started taking that oak course. So I am left with teaching second years. Okay. So I teach analog digital devices to second years. So after many years, thank of course I did teach two years ago CMOS VLSI design for MTEX. That was the last MTEC course I had. Hopefully this may be not the last, maybe they will give me another one. You know after you retire and your chair is not there, no one cares. Okay. So that is my problem. Do regards to all of my colleagues. So this area as I say uh, today and maybe on Friday, I will only introduce to you what is going on in the world, some kind of history of electronics or history of semiconductors and please take it, uh, this is a sentence I keep repeating every year, not a good, with no good results many time. The, uh, those who forget history, history forgets them faster. So never leave your history because history is the only thing which is linked to you for future. Another way I have found that this year uh, for last three years one of my student who is now professor Anil was taking this course and I casually asked him few days ago how many students that he was having in last three years. He said 85, 90. So I said fine that is great number, 85, 90 is a big number. Today morning. Unfortunately, I just opened the web page for this course. I figured 150, I was dazed. Second year, I understand 150. Okay, so as I say, for last two years, I am retired and maybe another three years, I may stay hopefully. So this is a course which I like most and haven't taught many years. 
So let us see I do justice to what I understand and what you understand. Here is something details about course. Uh, my name of course is there. My email address you write down. I said 6 credit course and to, uh, my objective for the course is to expose you all to a technology which has revolutionized and revised the world in every sphere of our life. The course emphasizes on silicon integrated circuits. So there are many other semiconductors which are becoming more popular now and uh, hopefully they may also later join the race but today of course it is silicon, silicon and silicon. So we will talk only about silicon IC fab and we will try to give you enough information on various processes which are used in fabricating these ICs. A uh, major thrust will be modeling of the processes and also we will give you what are techniques to make them. Okay. Techniques are not that very important because many of you may never actually work in the fab lab. Okay. Very few may be allowed or may be trained to do that. But modeling of course CAD is something which everyone does. So be strict to that. So modeling is major worry in this course. Okay. So silicon solar cells are very getting into very importance in world, world over after almost lull of 20 years. 25 years no one thought of silicon solar cells but it has come back heavily now. A lot of money has been pumped in by all governments because suddenly they realize petrol has a problem. Okay. You can see how many wars are going on for that. Okay. So that is the issue, how oh, much corruption on that, everything is going with the oil. Okay. The text of this course uh, is found in three books. I normally do not teach from any book in general. But these, the first book in particular, Plumber, Deal and Griffin's book on Silicon VLSI technology, uh, Fundamentals, Practice and Modeling. Uh, this, I had only second edition, please check it if it is uh, higher editions are available, they will be better. Okay, so this book is available, I am not check it but hopefully available, maybe costlier. So the other book which is not in the print now, so this book is one of the most uh, uh, or rather one of the best possible book in 80s or 70s rather. He is the pioneer of VLSI technology or semiconductor technology and uh, his name is Saurabh K. Gandhi. He is Indian but settled uh, maybe born brought up in US I thought so. He is actually from Mumbai. Okay. Uh, there is another person's uh, name I say Chang and Z. They have a book on VLSI technology. There are many other books in the library check for them. Uh, but as I say mostly I will teach from the first book, mostly, no, does not mean I will teach from that book, okay. but possibly yes, most material is available in this first book. So we are talking about what kind of things I am going to talk about, I may talk about crystal growths, diffusion, implants, oxidation, CVDs, PCVDs, all kinds of deposition techniques and all models for them. Okay, that is most important part. Lithography which is the major crux of all the process going on, we will talk about that. We will also look into some failure mechanisms and as I say some silicon solar cell also will be talked. At the end of the day or maybe the important uh, output of this is to show you how silicon chip is particular IC is fabricated in a process. There may be 24 or 30 process steps or mask as they called. Total steps may be around 500 when the chip is made, but the major step which I say 25 or so to, uh, may go to 30, 35 these days and these are something I do not how an IC is made, okay, full IC. Processes in here, all these processes are used to generate an IC, so how an IC is actually made, typically we will talk about NMOS and CMOS. Okay, so we start with something today. First lecture is micro to nano, a journey into ICs, IC technology. Anything in VLSI or anything in electronics, for that matter everything in the world these days is related to economics, okay. That is why all these people rule us, you know, banks and every one of you also want to join that because that is the way money is. So actually if you see the, this is slightly old slide, how many things are actually electronics things are this? There is a equipment, material, semiconductor, electronics products and customers demand are all kinds of equipments you can see from there, uh, mobile to whatever it is. Okay. Since there are around 300,000, 30,000 
billion dollar business is going on, so very important for us to be part of it. Just for, for your own sake I can say hopefully so, uh, if some of you take projects in uh, technology hopefully many of you should, then uh, there is an, uh, I hope in near uh, this Ahmedabad there is a place north of this Palanpur, first India's fab will come, okay. already land has been acquired, some work has started. This is Hindustan Semiconductor Microelectronics Center HSMC like TSMC of Taiwan we are India's now and it is starting with a group which whose head is um, Professor uh, Dr. Devin Verma who was my classmate in masters. So I am also consulting them. So I assure you that maybe three years down you will have first India's fab and we will be working on 32 nanometer process. So history if you see uh, uh, from 1900 to 2000 I did not I have old slides so I did not change but I can show you higher up later. Uh, we started with the uh, vacuum tubes, diode, triode then we went to 30s we thought of concept of transistors, concept no transistors. First transistor came in 47, uh, this is essentially from Bell Lab effort, first MOSFET came in 60. And then we started connecting those uh, components into one. The most important part of integrated circuit is that all components are made out of on the silicon itself or on the wafer itself and that is why it was called word integration. The metal connection everything there is no wire there is a connecting line which itself is a connector inside on the top on the bottom also there are many kinds now. Then uh, if you look at the circuits what is our effort right now we are looking for first reliability, then we are looking for low power, high speed, high integration, all kinds of requirements came and we started putting larger number of devices on a chip. Typically now we can put 1 billion devices on a single chip, okay, that is the kind of technology we have and sooner we may have 3 to 4 billion devices on chip. But I will give you some sheet, uh, this slide later with which uh, Getting too many is also not profitable. First vacuum tube, DD forest, you can see you, I do not know any one of your, your, maybe your parents also may not have seen, but hopefully yes. There used to be a glass tube, roughly 2.5 centimeters to 5 centimeters and uh, used to do rectification as well as transistor equivalence amplification. There are three uh, terminals there, one here, one here and one here. So one is called cathode, one is called anode and in between is called grid. Grid is biased so that the electron motion from cathode to anode can be modulated and that is how amplification can be obtained. So this is the first transistorized version which appeared in 1906 and uh, Lady Forrest and Wilson got the Nobel Prize. So it is a very bulky. Okay. In 28, uh, some army officer, air force officer in England actually suggested that uh, you can have a solid state equivalent device which can control the current from source to drain. He gave, he, these names were not given by him, this was little added later by himself, but initially his first paper did not have these names. So what he has, he has a, some aluminium over which he deposited aluminium oxide by oxidation and put two contacts which he called source and drain. And he figured out that uh, this device can actually connect between source and drain and gate can control the current. This is his first but he has not made them, okay. he has not made any MOS. The first transistor which was made was in 47. The three Nobel Prize winners are shown on the right, Barden, Breton and Shockley. And the first transistor looks, it is a point contact transistor, maybe a better figure is here. You can see how bad it was in those days just to connect things, but today the IC looks to be fantastic. The first uh, integrated circuit uh, was due to the effort of Jack Kilby at Texas Instruments and uh, what he thought that why actually get different components from separately 
So why not use silicon areas itself to create resistor capacitors and those of course he never thought of inductors. But uh, and he put some device bipolar transistors created there itself and connected on silicon chip itself okay and that was the first IC. Just to give an idea in 58 Jack Kilby at Texas made simple oscillator uh, which has 5 IC component resistor capacitor distributed capacitor and transistor and in 2000 the importance of IC was recognized please look at it. It took 50 years for Nobel committee to think that this was a great thing okay. So they awarded him in 2000 and which was also shared by him by others. So in 2000 Kilby got his Nobel Prize. The other person who would have got is the next figure I will show was nice but somehow he expired and therefore he was not the participant on that. So this is the first IC and just to give an interesting anecdote, Kilby was hired after his graduation uh, by Texas instrument and he had no work to do. So he was just sitting reading. Uh, so in those days it was not high pressured industry. So he was allowed to sit and do something, watch what is going, training as they called in those days. So he used to get bored. So in his off time what to do? So he did this. Okay. So think of it even if you are doing idling, do something constructive. This is Robert Noyce. He made the, you know in earlier transistors we figured out. For example, there will be contacts on the bottom side, on the top and it is difficult to put a wire from top to bottom. Okay. So only one discrete device could be made. So make an IC, how do you connect different devices, you know some top to bottom, bottom to top connections that is wires will come and that whole integration will lose, will be lost. So what he did that he could bring all contacts on one surface, it is called planar. So that was his invention. He said it is a planar technology that was his choice. Robert Noyce is also very famous for he was one of the founder members among the three of the most uh, famous company of uh, world right now in electronics Intel. So he is the founder of Intel. Okay. In 60 at Bell Labs the first MOS transistor was made 26 people suggested it or 28. It took almost 32 years before it was first device was made. It is a mass capacitor shown here which was created by Kang and Atala at Bell Labs and one can say semiconductor history is Bell Lab in the history. He was a Korean. Okay. But un unfortunately if you see uh, there is no Indian anywhere. Okay. We always follow, we do not think ahead. So let us start changing this concept sooner. The first uh, vacuum tube based computer was made in 46 is called ENIAC. It is electronic calculator okay. and uh, it has a big size, huge power, short life uh, because the filament which actually generates electrons by heating, the, it gets used to spoil you know. An equivalent vacuum tube probably you know, of course these days even that has gone. Earlier TV tubes used to be and now of course there are solid states. But earlier there were TV tube at least you could say a vacuum tube being used. Now most see, TVs do not have that. They are LCD or LED displays. So they do not even have tubes now. So the filament was to heat and it will generate electrons in vacuum and they will travel by the voltage or the field and they will be connected. And if you modulate them in between, so I can amplify something from the modulating angle. So this was the first such computer. Uh, this is your pocket PC and that is your computer. This had a, it of course a smaller part has been shown. It was having around uh, one acre of land in, internally used to create a small calculator which does addition, subtraction, multiplication, not even division. 7071 first large scale integration devices came DRAM 4K 4000K or 4000 bits or 4096 uh, bits. This was 1103 from Intel and also there was first microprocessor which was a P channel device which is 4004 4 bit device 4 bit microprocessor. 
this is the first microprocessor made. Of course, there is a fight between uh, many other companies than Intel which is still not solved. Uh, just to give an idea, the recent SD that is your card which you see uh, on your uh, memories which is typically 1 in 128 gbytes. Okay. This SD card is available you put everywhere in every system. If it is a byte then 128 g into 8 bits which is terabits. 10 to power 12 is tera. Compare it world population 7 billion, brain cells 10 to 100 billions. This number is varying Dif different people have different brain cells okay. Some may have 100 okay. I may have not, not even 10 now many of them might have burnt okay. Stars in galaxy is 100 billion. So we are talking of numbers which is even beyond the what one can really perceive and therefore and this size is hardly 1 inch by one to one and a half inch thickness may be half half a centimeter or even lower maybe 2 millimeters and you just plug in and you have 128 GB uh, memory availability. So the kind of thing technology could do is enormous just take it if I want to make the same by the way you must have seen many of the slide have some borrowed from Iwai Hiroshi. Iwai Hiroshi is a very famous PLSI technology person in Tokyo Institute of Technology and uh, for good sake for me I am his friend last 12 years 15 years or maybe 98 so maybe 16 years. I have visited their lab 8-10 times so many of his PPDs I could just marrow you know, to show you. Uh, he visits every December those who wish to visit. we have been he has permanent faculty for one month IIT Bombay E department. Okay. So let us say you have one this uh, each this is the 2.4 centimeter by 3.21 centimeters uh, the volume is around 1.6 centimeter cube cc and 2 gram weight and you typically apply 2.5 to 3.5 volts. Now if you look at old vacuum tube which is a 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter let us say equivalent square if I create and 10 centimeter high 100 gram weight and it consumes 550 watts of power typical voltage you have to apply 300 volts. So now equivalently if I create 1 terabit something in the vacuum tubes what will happen here is the number 1 terabit is 10, 10 to power 12 so I made 444 4, 4 bits for each of them if I put into a vacuum tube given then you can see it has a 500 meters this 500 meters this and 1 kilometer down that kind of system I will have to create to, to must make as kit. Okay. The present day other towers of course is the old one which is Shanghai is which is possibly will come in 2016 is 700 meters. India is going to build in Mumbai I do not know when and now things are changing it may be 7 and 7000 meter also I do not know but the present day which has already been is the highest tower in the world is right now 828 meters in Dubai. So look at it even the tower we they made is 800 meters and we are asking 1 kilometer 1000 meters okay. So if I had to make one small memory bit, uh, this card that this many tower this much is also not possible okay. So the progress what we have done over the years these are something interesting data which you all should understand how much we have progressed. Uh, if you look at the power 1 terabit 10 to power 12 bits as I said 50 watts of power it consumes in tubes so it is 50 terawatts we need 50,000 nuclear power plants for just 128 GB chip okay. An example he gave me uh, is in Japan they have only 54 nuclear power plants one of course is down now. Last summer Tokyo electric power company can supply only 550, 55 billion watts okay. Now you want terawatts or one is memories, one memory chip. So you need 1000 such companies to make 1 GB memory 
and imagine how many memories are being used in cameras and everywhere in electronics. So how much power you would have required just to create that small memory. Okay. So think of it vacuum tubes are great in those days 1900 was real great. But things where are we now? Okay. So the progress of integrated circuit is extremely important for power saying if nothing else. Otherwise, so much nuclear plants would have to put more just to create one memory. If you look at an equivalent in your human this, you can see your brain is like ICs. There are many ICs there which are mostly processors. Neurons are essentially processors. Okay. So there is an information which you receive through sensors. Your sensors are ear and eye. You have mouth which is like an RF opto device. It actually takes it, monitors it, vibrates it and at very high frequency and that is how digestion takes place, that is how the vocal cord works. Okay. So yes, let us say these are the devices which we make and this is what humans are. Your stomach is something like a photovoltaic device, huge uh, power is generated out of it okay. and your hands and legs are like power devices, they can move. Okay. So already humans are doing whatever is what we are now trying to do and therefore most of the biomedical people keep trying to put equivalence of that, you know, oh neuron, this processor, this equivalent, okay. But humans are right now the only thing which so far we cannot emulate. All robots are maybe at least 0.1% of the human capacities, best of robot. Okay. Uh, since you are all becoming too smart, not just smart, everyone wants to do this okay. and you also demand all kinds of applications. So you need a very high performance, extremely low power, you do not want to plug in every now and then. Okay. So the CMOS probably is the only answer which is relatively low power. Earlier we used to say very zero power, it is not true, it also consumes hell of a power comparatively. Please take from me that one of the thing which will maybe in this course I may not discuss is this current technologies of 30 nanometer down or uh, maybe even 45 nanometer down actually have devices in your cell, cell cells or mobiles which are you can all mobiles are standby because they are not always on but have to be on because otherwise when the message comes or this it has to be turned on. So power down mode is also there, power on mode is also there and when you can actually shut, or shut it off. So the problem is in this standby mode okay. because standby mode power is consumed even if it is not really working. The pro problem started in 30 nanometer down technologies or devices made that the off power is higher than the on power, 66 percent off power, 33 percent on power. Which means if you just keep your mobile, it will leak without you doing actually. That is why most of you keep talking 24 hours. Okay, okay so that is some fun part in that. Semiconductor device market grow 5 times in last 12 years, it is though it is very matured market 2011 to 2025, 300 billion USD was the in 2011 and we expect in next 14 years, I mean from 11, 1500 billion US dollar business. Okay. So if that much is the business, then you can think how many people will be involved just to do this kind of business and therefore the research, therefore the effort. How do one calculates cost of the chip? Let us say we make 1000 wafers per month, lot of parts in fact. $600 is a 6 inch wafer, of course we will show you now it is not 6 inch, 12 inch, 16 inch, quarter micron thickness, quarter micron. So it cost you roughly $3.5 per centimeter square, add packaging cost of 0.25 cents per pin for quad or any kinds of package you have. Uh, this is very costly part, package is the costliest part in the chip, okay. chip is very cheap. So typically from the numbers you get, 
you find that the cost is calculated how many chips per wafer you will get how much per this is the how much package cost and then there is a profit okay at the end of the day there is a profit otherwise who will sell okay so this profit makes industry go and whenever there is no profit which you see many of you are now good economists than me i have never gone to so called the famous sensex market this here in mumbai except i used to see when i was in tif for the tower i have no money to really invest so i couldn't go there okay so i figured out that those people are deciding what we should do which is very funny but that's how the money matters okay today silicon device is indispensable most important devices for our human society everything has to be controlled by silicon silicon relies extremely high frequency high speed operation with extremely low cost low power small size reliable today's it industry or today's it products if you see such as internet i mode cellular gps game machine entertainment robots they could not have been realized if there would not have been silicon ics coming to entertainment it's very interesting that the major market for an integrated circuit is in this game machines actually if you go to uh, of course luckily in india so far it has not been profitable there are game st this play stations across uh, most of the cities in the world in tokyo at least there are 1000 i know where the streets have been uh there are four to five on every street and i don't know what whole night hack 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 they keep doing and enjoy fine they are money so they enjoy okay so what you are doing these days it seems so what is that is driving us last 100 years if you see that we started with vacuum tube in 1900 let's say up to 2000 we went from 10 cm kind of size to 100 nm below now so typically in 100 years we have 1 million times reduction in sizes which was remarkable okay let suddenly in 2000 people started forgetting the word micro and they invented the word nano okay now this word micro to nano is not very fair and this is the graph which i always show for full my point the left side this side is the microns and this side is the nanos so if you see up to 0.1 micron which is 100 nanometers uh, we went started from few microns 10 micron structures down to 90 nanometers by 2000 and below 90 nanometer we say it is nano only one of the dimension was less than 100 nanometers and we suddenly jumped into because it looked the all politicians bureaucrats they have fancy for new words you know so they only pay you project wise if i say i want a micro i will make a micro chip they say no money i want nano chip how much <laughs> <laughs> so that if i say i am going to preach 150 student that salary is enough you know what else you want if i say i am going to teach 10000 colleges 5000 per from here oh how much money no problem there is huge money with us so there is some number game going on okay so is in nano cmos of course 90 is not bad 90 and we are now reached a state we will show you later is around 16 nanometer we are already working at but the game is nano what started when we crossed 100 nanometers and only channel length was less than 100 nanometers so we uh, suddenly we came new name new money okay that's how the cn appeared na If I would have said center for microelectronics, no one would have paid. Nano, so okay. They were by say two hundred crores we got. I mean, we fooled them well. Okay. Not that we are not doing anything. I mean that this money they would not have given if we would have not put the word nano. Okay. So luckily for us, uh, this nano itself. The this is some graph which I initially showed you. This direction below nano. it somehow not going in that slope but to give the get length the get length is not scaling down okay in the same proportion and therefore uh, some respite is there for a technology man you scale exactly same way then technology has a tough time to match okay 
However, uh, things are for example a nano, 90 nanometer node is actually gate length is 50 nanometers and uh, if you have polygate device its thickness is 1.2 nanometers 12 Armstrongs. Okay. Now this scaling down is very important why are we scaling we went from large microns point, uh, 10 microns 5 microns my first chip of India along with TI for other colleagues. Few of them are here, Professor uh, Dinesh Sharma was my colleague, Professor Apte has just resigned and left, he was my colleague and Professor Pinto who actually manages our lab is also from TI, we have and few more Aveva and many TIFR faculty after retirement joined here, let us see me, okay. So because of us we were first to make first IC in 79, 80 time. Uh, though I must honestly say it did not work fully but it was made partly it was work it was shown to Indira Gandhi so all of us were kept in behind only my professor was ahead okay. who probably did not know how did we make okay. that is how professors are. Okay. Why professors actually do this because if you know it you will do it if you do not know it you will teach it is not it that is the way. <laughs> However, I must tell you that first 25 years I actually worked in the lab. Uh, so I, I am not one of those faculty who have never been to lab. I worked many devices including thyristors and all photo I have made many, many devices in my career, micro devices. So I am not saying that but generally this is what most people believe. Teacher ko kya ek ghanta padaya maja hi maja. Aisa nahi hai. So in 1900 electronics started. Uh, applications were amplifier, radio, TV, wireless, 70 microelectronics started, silicon ICs came, device features were 10 microns or lower slightly, applications were still digital, computer, PCs, there was a technology revolution then and in 2000 nanoelectronics started, devices still silicon CMOS ICs, features are less than 100 nanometers, major applications are still microprocessor, cell phones and there is a technology version, maybe just evolution and innovation. But great evolution and innovations and so many innovations, if you think keep going this, you can understand where we probably may reach. Okay. 2014 nano electron is continued, still silicon CMOS, around 10 nanometers, still digital, okay. still evolution innovation is continuing. So think of it. Since I may not survive 2025, I hope so. I mean, I wish I do not want to survive beyond that itself. I mean, even now I am enough old. Uh, but I can at least say 2025 silicon CMOS will not go. Okay. Beyond that, I may not. So I may say it may leave up to 2050 also, it is okay because I may not be answerable. But 2025, I can assure you, silicon technology cannot be defeated by any other material technologies, whatever they may say, whatever they may claim for taking money, okay. But otherwise, silicon ICs cannot be replaced, okay. Take from me, okay. Uh, this was in 2002, a 7 nanometer gate uh, first tra transistor were made, 7 nanometers. Though of course it was not an IC, it was an isolated device. So even as early as 2012 years ago, the first device with 7 nanometer was made, okay. So think of it, technology going from lab to an actual fab house, it takes 10 years, now even now 7 we are not reached, okay. So research is a part of the game, keep doing, keep doing, someday someone will pick it. Last few slides. Uh, all of us are looking for tera instructions per second, mega flops and this all a beta, we are looking for teras, okay. more than tera in fact now. So we are looking for processors which can give one tips instruction by 2012, actually we are not reached so far, we may reach okay, soon. Uh, we started 8084 to 4004, I did not write, but 8085, 8086, 8286, 386, Pentium, Pro, Ethylon, many others names appeared, but still we have to reach normal case. Paralleling is, paralleling is okay, quad may do, but quad has another problem. Four at a time working synchronous is very difficult. 
sharing memories is also difficult okay. though it is the major way people are increasing the speed so a number of instructions per second but that is single microprocessor with capability of 1 tera instruction per second is still to be achieved though we thought that 2012 it will but 2014 it has not reached. So what is that game in this technology is and why we are learning over the years new technologies because even if we this is a mass device I trust many of you are aware now in 1980s uh, people did not know a mass transistor. The mass transistor theory used to be 2-3 pages in Milkman Halkia's book in those days that was microelectronics, God knows why they called microelectronics. And uh, whenever we will interview a student for his MTech entrance, he will exactly draw the figure which is vertical mass device which never exists actually or silicon planar is not it, it will go down but he will show you source drain gate because that is the figure given in the Milkman Halkia. Then I say carriers are generated because of minority carriers. I keep telling oh, minority carriers so small, how much current? No, no, that is what Milman gives. Okay. Because Milman was a circuit man, he did not know anything of physics. So he keep telling nonsense and everyone come here and told me the same. So I have to keep telling them, sir, this is wrong, sir, please listen from me. So the mass device was so much odd for most of the engineering institutions that they came only with bipolars. So the question was asked that why bipolar was left and why suddenly MOS came in. Two reasons one can see, one is bipolar required larger power supply voltages compared to MOS. Then they were not scalable, like MOS as I say we keep scaling down by some ratio, performance still can be achieved or better performance is achieved. But then bipolar scaling was just not possible, base width could not be made 0, okay. so you cannot scale base width too much. Okay. So bipolar technology being costlier, more power consuming uh, suddenly could not match the number of devices required on a chip would be smaller in bipolar compared to MOS. So in every sphere it was not able to and costly, so then they say why continue. But 2000 again we are still continuing with some bipolar processes and simply because they are very high speed but they are not in silicon okay. We are working on 3-5 materials where the mobility is the important part and their bipolar circuits are coming back at least part of the bipolar and part of the mass is can be together called bi-C mass okay. but otherwise bipolar is out uh, for all practical purposes. Even the op amps 741, initially we started with bipolar op amp 741, but nowadays you cannot get one, okay. all MOS, and MOS or CMOS op amps are available. So whole and everyone looking for money, everyone looking for better performance has shifted to MOS. So here is a MOS device, I hope many of you know, this is the silicon, this is source. This is one diffused area, this is drain, this is the gate and in between gate and substrate there is a thin insulator layer which is earlier used to be silicon dioxide and even now many devices are silicon dioxide. So if I this L effective is the link between source and den, W is the width of the gate or transistor. So if we just reduce the dimension by 30 percent transistor density doubles. If our thickness of oxide is scaled down, we can have faster because electrons taking time to go from source to drain will be reduced, speed will be higher, better performance. And uh, if I scale power supply and threshold, I may get low power. So the whole game now is to reduce everything so that scale down everything so that you have better performance and much more density of devices on a chip. What is the time like? Well, good. Uh, so what is in future? Uh, this is the same. The clock lasts only you can see the figure of graph figure this uh, frequency versus year. Uh, we are expecting around 2010 a CPU should reach 10 gigahertz or even earlier but we have not. Okay. The problem is that we cannot do probably maybe we can hit it some way 
but cost would be so high that that is not worth. Okay. Firstly, whom, how many of you really you want to use a processor which is more than say 6 gigahertz? Mostly you use 3.4 to 4.2 gigahertz. So, really processors are fast processors are required only for those gaming interested persons who wants to kill the person on the screen before he actually starts. Okay. So, only for video games probably you need a much faster processors. Okay. Or if you are doing a large amount of process, uh, arithmetic or large amount of uh, numerical crunching, maybe you need a supercomputer which should be very high speed. Okay. Uh, one looks for tera if possible. There also what we are doing is 40 of them we are paralleling, merging, then one of them fails, all of them fail. So all that so called supercomputers in India which you listen would, we must congratulate them for putting so many parallel series combination and every now and then failing that they do not tell okay. because anything is in series if one fails the series chain goes okay. in parallel if one of them draws more current the other fails hogged. Okay. So paralleling is not the best solution okay. that is why Intel is still not going beyond 4, four processor required that is it okay. because paralleling has its own problems. Okay. Though it is one of the better problem a better solution to increase speed. So I do not think even in 2025, we may cross 10 gigahertz, though we believe we should be able to. At least in silicon, it is not possible. Other materials, maybe, we do not know. Something which is not known, I should not say, but uh, I think there will not be enough use to go for that. Okay. All industry works on how many people buy how much. Okay. Uh, so, this is the journey. First IC has 4 transistors, few resistors and in early 90s this was the first, uh, first processor chip which was Pentium 1. Okay. So what is the law which is actually allowing scaling and I will show you the graphs little later. What he said a famous person who was the founder member of Intel, by the way Noyce, Ferge and uh, Gordon Moore and others. They were all members of Shockley Lab earlier and uh, Shockley started his own company leaving Bell Labs, all of them came and started in California. Uh, what happened there that Shockley's uh, nature was very bad and uh, at least that is what reported. I have not met him so I do not know. <laughs> no, Gordon Moore I have met so I can tell you something okay. But others I, I do not know. So because of them these people were so annoyed. So they joined a company called Fairchild. Fairchild was a camera company. <laughs> so uh, camera company has some chips requirement. So these people have actually joined Fairchild and in clandestine way or otherwise they actually started working for logic chips, okay, designing how to fab and all. And when they were ready with some blueprint they separated and started Intel. Okay. Some people from Intel also did same thing and they started AMD. Unfortunately, AMD could not stand great competition with, uh, there was also another company which started equally well was Motorola, which I do not know for God, God's sake why it has happened. It lost market everywhere wherever it entered. The last one is mobile, Google purchased the mo motor market and I sold it out to Lenovo. Okay. So I do not know there is some problem with the word moto, I have a moto right now. My son gave me this so I am I am still struggling with this smart word there. Okay. So this problem which we started is that number of devices to be put in larger number created lot many other problems okay, how to connect them. Okay. So what Moore said every year if you scale down earlier of course he said every year but now every three years he changed recently this is called Moore's third law. 0.7 times you scale dimensions. So 0.7 into 0.7 is 49, 0.49 which is half. So obviously if your area goes half, so the component density will double, okay, half, half, double. That was the law he gave. Actually it was an exponential law, he took it to binary and declared that as his law, Moore's law. It was done in way back in 60s. And it's surprisingly 2014, we are still talking about Moore's law 
and all the technology people, designers keep watching that Moore's law. Oh, I must reach there, okay. As if that is sacrosanct or that is gospel, but that is what the Moore is. Uh, great visionary. That time in 64, 65, the technology was not even MOS, it was a bipolar process. MOS was just PMOS devices just started coming. Intel started making first logic on PMOS and they suddenly this law came. So, great man I must say accordingly. So, what is the advantage of scaling? You reduce the capacitance, so you reduce power, you increase speed. Why speed? Because if the capacitance goes down, uh, charging a capacitor if it is smaller, the current required is CdV by dt. So, if C is smaller obviously charging current is smaller, so is time taken will be for a larger current higher speeds. So that is how first advantage we see can speed up just by reducing size. If you integrate then many functions can be integrated, so many not just processor, you can put everything on chip, okay. So that is number of functions where you have micro, you have arithmetic, we have shift registers, we have all kinds of circuits blocks which you can put on a single chip. So lot of functions could be created and of course as I said parallel processing is possible two at a time or three at a time therefore improve the speed. So this is all possible simply because by reducing the dimension of the device which is called scaling law which is Moore's law okay. You scale okay. however that scale as I showed you is not going straight now it is slightly bent down. So now what is it every three years it will increase new law okay. Maybe someday say five years okay. Uh, See what is the demand from future VLSI, much higher performance, much low power consumption and therefore downsizing or reducing silicon devices is the most important and very critical issue for all technology and designers. That is what we are, that is why every year we have to change technology because the demand will come from video game side for example, I want this, then everyone will work for 2 years you know, somehow to give them. When you reach there, they say no, 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 this is not enough. So we again work for it, okay. That is how we are changing money to some extent and improving. But this will continue 2025, beyond I do not know. There are limits coming, uh, there are effects called short channel effect, there are source and resistance effect, direct tunneling If these are failure mechanisms, okay. On the right cause which we said, everyone is saying in 1987, or 1978 book by Mead and Conway, the first VLSI design book in the world. Mead is a very famous, he is still surviving. Uh, so Carver Mead said that you do not need to know technology to design a chip, which was his, he himself was a technology man earlier, but he said so. These are called design rules. Technology will give constraints. So these constraints actually are essentially where up to you can go. So he said by 1987, no more progress will be done. 2014 still progress is being done. So sometimes no one is like Moore. Moore always said it will. Carver by his physics, he said no it cannot, but it did. So what has happened? Why Carver thought that fundamental limits will be crossed and why? Because you know the, we all understand physics, but silicon does not. So it behaves the way it wants, that is why. So we believe silicon. So by today we are working on 10 nanometers, 7 nanometers maybe someday. So wherever there is something is not possible, there is a uh, association which I will show you, okay last few parts before I come back. It is called ITRS, there is a industrial technological roadmap company, uh, these people who meet some 100, 500 people in different areas join and predict what is next every next year. So the ITR has also said that well there is something you cannot do. So they put what we call red brick in that map. You cannot cross this. But Indians are smart, so, so are worldwide. So they made a small hole and got in. Okay. <laughs> that is what the day, no one jumped. Okay. Red brick bada in under. So you cannot cross thermionically tunnel it. Okay. So more tunnel devices appeared. Okay. So yeah, as I said, uh, by we are expecting 
uh, 1 billion transistors already all on the way. This is the Moore's law. Okay. I did not put his face, but it is okay. Uh, this is also old law, but still. So, one can see if you see here and if you see the number of die transistors per die, uh, the topmost is essentially is, uh, memories. So, yeah, we have already reached SRAM memories of. 256 megabits of I to this. DRAM, of course, we are gone to 64 to 128 to 256 gigabits. Uh, processors, we are itanium, ethylene, and this. Uh, yeah, they are billion transistors on chip now. So, we are still following Moore's law okay. to a great extent. Only thing is slope is changing means number of years required to reach the higher value is increasing, but that is so. It is not saturating. The whole game is. Moore's law is still valid, it is not saturating and that is something uh, this person has to be uh, this. So, at that, that time he said from one year he changed it to 18 months in 2013, 3 and 2012 he said every 3 year it will be doubled, okay, all that he modified it, Moore's third law as they say. So, you can see typically this is an exponential law which was being followed and so he said double 2.7 is a bad number, so he made it double. Uh, so, let us say we were at 1 nanometer and we wanted to reach 30 nanometers, size hard every 18 months let us say in those days. So, we uh, Moore has given a formula and which is interesting, whichever year you are in whatever technology, okay. so it is 2001, 1.5 is 12 by 18, uh, 18 by 12, so it is 1, so you adjust the actual numbers there multiplied by the technology in that year divided by the technology which you want to reach and you will get some number of years that is the Moore's law which no one no book will give this is I got from Moore so I can tell you okay. it is the year whichever year your technology is today let us say 2013 or 14 and let us say 3 years he says so 36 divided by 12 so it will be 3 log 2 we are working on let us say 16 nanometer want to reach 6 or 5 put it there find which year roughly this technology will be reached this is Moore's law okay. Of course question is arisen what then God knows what parallel that means paradigm shift essentially word means we will have to change our thinking right now what we are thinking is what Moore says we think okay. Moore ne bula, is saal mein you have to reach here, running, 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 thoda, thoda hi baj gaya, aur thoda. That is what we are trying. But let us not think more, think something different. None of us, none of the world people have thought so far. Yeah, there are quantum and everything, I will show you tomorrow, day after tomorrow, many devices which are come, which are good in lab, good on CAT tools, but no one is making any chip on that. Because cost and reliability is very poor. So, unless you really go to silicon equivalency mass, no one is going to put money. A typical fab lab for a one technology node, let us say Intel has just put uh, 11 nanometer technology node and invested 8 billion dollars. Okay. The Industan Semiconductor, our company, we have invested 6 billion dollars. <laughs> we means I have not paid any money. Okay. I do not have that money. Uh, my classmate has, uh, he is a venture capitalist himself. So, he has a lot of money and he has borrowed a lot of money including 2 billion dollars from government of India. So, that is the thing which you should lim limit. So, Moore is not the end of it, but as I say silicon does not understand anything, it may still do something wonders. Uh, now, question arises many people ask us over the years, initially our wafers were 1 inch wafers, silicon wafers, then we went for 3 inch then we went for 6 inch, then we went for 8 inch, then for 12 inch, now we are going for 16 inch. So, why not we start at 16 inch itself? Okay. Firstly, the growth condition that is why the first part of crystal growth, you know, so what is the problem to create larger size <coughs> wafers and what is the problem there? So, now of course, we are looking for 16 inch wafers. The latest technology, uh, this catchphrase is talk of nanotechnology. But if you ask me nanotechnology existed way back thousands years. 
molecules, atoms are of nano sizes. Chemist people are always nanotechnologists. So, why are we now calling ourselves nano? They existed, alchemy was known some 1000, 2000, 5000 years. So, everyone who works on molecules or atoms probably is a nanotechnology. We only converted to silicon what could be done and therefore we became greater as we thought. No one thinks otherwise, we only. Okay. So, now everyone wants to work on nanotechnology and then suddenly found silicon may not be the better material. So, look for 3, 5 compound materials, look for quantum mechanical uh, phenomena, uh, Coulomb's blockade, some charge phenomena. Cellular automata, many other interesting physics based devices come, spin transistors, all these are good, fantastic, okay. But FinFET will work for next 20 years, okay, as a, not at least 25, okay. I do not know ahead. Uh, they have a feature size of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 meters, nano. So, all of them who are working below this are nanotechnologists. Just to give a cost, you know, how, how one cost how if you increase the die size, die is the smaller chip area in a wafer 6 inch, 12 inch whatever size, you have some rectangle and um, some squares which forms one die which is the circuit. Okay. So, for example, two shown here on this there is a larger chip size, die size, the other one is a smaller die size because questions were asked that why not we started larger die size day one. Okay. So, we will answer for this. So, let us say if you have this is larger and this is smaller this. So, there are different cost involved and as I said industry only works on cost and nothing else. What is good is money. So, if I can fetch money more then all technologies are good. Okay. So, do not say that 90 nanometer is worse. Yeah, for many applications 90 nanometer uh, technology is fantastic, it is doing all that job what people are asking. So, why invest money? Just because you want, no, the industry you only will do as much as what is demanded. Okay. So, the cost of is called variable cost depend on the die size, die test, packaging, and the yield. Yield means how many good chips out of one wafer, okay. It is called die yield, total yield, and then each is wafer has a die yield. Die itself may not work, so it is called die yield. Some part may work actually. So, the cost of die can be given by cost of wafer divided by dies per wafer into die yield. Now, what are the definition? Die per wafer can be defined from its area and perimeters okay, and this is a formula which I got from somewhere pi wafer diameter by 2 square upon die area minus pi wafer diameter into root 2 die area. This is perimeter based, this is area based. Now, I can calculate die per wafer. I know how many good dyes are available. So, I know dyes per wafer into dye yield and I know how much is the cost of a wafer. Okay. So, I know what is the cost of each dye and if I know my cost of each dye and if I know dye, if I want to calculate dye yield, I we have created another formula which says it is 1 plus defects per unit area into dye. Now, this defects are the one which is material defects okay, which may be created during fab unknowingly by knowingly also they are there even if you know I cannot remove them or during actual chip operation also defects can start. Okay. So, based on this formula 1 plus defects per unit area into die area. So, alpha is technology parameter I will give some interesting numbers which we cal I calculated yesterday. The wafer size let us say of 12 inch let us say each die is 2.5 centimeter square that is 1.2 by 1.2 centimeters. Let us say each centimeter square has one defect which is many times larger, but as this is a technology is improving. 252 dies per wafer we can get from the, please remember wafer is circular, die square. So, obviously H chips are not possible. So, typically 252 dies per wafer one can get for 12 inch wafer if your die size is 2.5 centimeter square. Let us say you have die yield of 16 percent due to defects which is what the worry is. Okay. So, only 40 dies per wafer out of 250 are available. So, you can think of it if any industry has to work if it says that only one sixth of the chips are I mean devices are dies are working 
then it is too costly for them. Okay. So, the cost is something now related to defects, how many defects in process you get, that is why you need better processing. So, one can see from here, if I have larger yield, then your cost goes down, larger yield. Okay. If your dye yield is higher, obviously you can see your variable cost will be smaller. So, the game in the actual processing is to reduce defects. Okay. Okay, here is the figure. Uh, Let us say there are 7 defects localized okay, in the process. If I have a larger die size, you can see not a single chip is available to you. Okay. So, it is randomized, but the intentionally shown this way so that you you do not actually get a maybe one chip out of four you got. Okay. Maybe I should have put it here, but it is okay. However, if I reduce the die size and kept same defects, you can see that at least there will be 14, 15 chips out of 20 odd numbers I am saving actually. So, if you increase the effort size, if you increase the die size, it does not really help actually, is that clear? Unless your processes are defect free and these are something which is not so easy to control. All people try it their best. So, there is always a game how big the chip size should be. For example, Pentium has around uh, 1.75 into 1.4 centimeter first Pentium chip, but they are not going beyond 2 centimeter, 2 centimeter, they are not looking for 4 centimeter square chip because that is the problem. If I put larger chip size here, no, no chip is possible. 8 defect, everything gone. Okay. Otherwise, I will have full wafer as one chip system, okay. but a one defect, whole wafer gone. 12 inch wafer cost around 600 dollars, so both pura hawa mein. Processing cost you have done so much that also billion dollars lost, uh, 100,000 dollars cost. So, the problem starts how good is the defect free processing. So, one of the area which is called manufacturability which this course may not teach you or may not discuss. I just wanted to tell you why processes you must learn because at the end of the day we are our worry is cost. Okay. So, as good a process you create at that much cost will reduce and that is where the market is. Okay. So, unless, so why people normally go for off shelf products, dim, memories, DRAMs, SRAMs because they are sold in millions or trillions. Okay. So, even if it is little less yield, the, the sell is so high, you do not mind actually wasting some money. But if you are making a particular circuit for an application, how many chips will be bought? Maybe 10,000, 20,000 a lakh. Then the cost is so high and people may not buy, say to 50 dollars nahi chahiye, okay. then who will buy? So, the question and I must tell you due regards to all of you and myself, I should keep, but since this whole silicon technology is from US, that money also goes in dollars, we know it is changing every day with our rupee. So, I do not know what multiplier should use 60 or 58.5 or 64, Bharat ka rupee kidar bhi ghumta hai. So, I do not want to so keep USD which is standard size, but that is not fair. Why should we look for US? But that is our life, cannot much do, cannot do much. So, uh, proportion to th also the die cost is strong function of die area, it is proportion to third or fourth power of die area. Actually, it is very high if larger dies are used. Before we equate, these are the three possible technologies which VLSI people are looking for in the market. First is transistor, typical MOSFET transistor is shown here. Uh, this is of course interesting, this is a fin, what single fin fit, a single fin FET. This is Intel process, this is silicon germanium, this is silicon nitride. Okay. There are three different types of insulators used and uh, this is a typical transistor can be used in logic. The second technology is called logic technology. The third, second is DRAM, which is the highest sellable memories actually. Where do you think DRAM is put on a desktop or any system? Where is it? You have a main processor, which has how many, what is, what memory it has? Cache. So, at best, 
L1, L2, L3, L4, maybe few kilobytes. Okay. <coughs> Whereas we need giga. Okay. So the first memory just outside the processor which is connected is the first DRAM. It may be data RAM, but it is DRAM. Okay. Then there is a next DRAM and then hard disk. Okay. So DRAM is the highest sellable component as of now. Camera, every such com will require some mem uh, temporary memories of high value, okay. And that is why this is a second technology. One is processor technology or logic based, the second is memory based technology, both for DRAM as well as SRAM, but more so DRAM. And third technology which is taking over now, because most of the problem started with SRAM and DRAM was DRAM is a dynamic, so it actually loses data after some time of use or even otherwise. And uh, SRAM of course is a powered device all time, so it loses data when the power is gone, gone away. <coughs> so we came with uh, E square PROM or EPROMs which can be stored out without power. But the problem there is you cannot put large amount of data on those EPROMs. You can probably increase the memory, but then the excess time, time taken to take data out is very high in EPROMs or E square PROMs. So the effort now is SRAM is the best because it is very high speed memory, excess times can be few nanoseconds whereas in the case of flash it may be milliseconds in earlier ones. Now of course we have gone to micros. So we are looking for even faster time uh, memories and we want to erase them in one go, it is called flash. So effort right now is to make flash memories which are uh, closer to DRAM speeds if, if not to SRAM speeds. Okay. Well, what is the advantage? Then I do not have to power them all the time okay. and that is something great it may happen. If it happens SRAM market will go away or DRAM market may go away. But this is still far off 16 years from now or uh, 10 years from now. Okay. I am not there. Typically this is the processing sequence. Maybe we will come back again and discuss but this is what it is. Uh, I will come back it later. So just to give before we quit is the process steps which are the main processes which we use uh, in this whole course are the following that you may note down. Okay. Uh, normally we talk about short forms, A chemical vapor deposition is called CVD. Okay. So there will be some processes called using CVDs. Then there will be processes for oxid and oxidation of silicon or any other material. They are created used for insulating dielectrics. Okay. CVD and oxidation, insulating dye, they create dielectrics that is silicon dioxide, nitride, many other things. Okay. Hafnium oxide, zirconium oxide, germanium oxide, all oxides can be deposited or by oxidized the material itself. Okay. On gallium arsenide I cannot create silicon dioxide, I will have to deposit because gallium arsenide is a different material. So you need depositions and you also need growths. Okay. So if I heat silicon at around 850 and above or any other process maybe low temperature, I get silicon plus oxygen, SI plus O2 is SiO2 and to a great surprise sand, SiO2 is a sand and it is third largest abundant material on the earth. That is why silicon will stand because material infinite hai. Water and sunlight, these are the other two. Third largest material available on the crust of earth is sand. Okay. And you create silicon out of this sand, the process is damn costly okay. but that is what it is. The second process of interest which is the most important process right now which allows you reduction in sizes some uh, 90 nanometers, 65, 45, 32. Now these are called nodes, okay. these numbers. They came from simple idea of Moore, you divide it or multiply it by 0.7, 90 into 0.7 is 63. So we say six, next node is 65. 65 into 0.7 is roughly 45, 45 into 0.7 is 32. So these numbers essentially are 0 0.7 down. Okay. However, this is all humbug now because what was thought as the technology limits has nothing to do with this number now. 
16 nanometer process is using 9 nanometers of gate oxides okay. So <laughs> there is no scaling in that order but nodes are still called that way okay. So 11 nanometer technology will have actually gate length of 7 nanometers okay. 7 nanometer technology may have 3 nanometer. Of course 3 nanometers is worrying some because one mono layer of silicon is 5 and strong okay. Now that is 0.5 nanometers one knows uh, how do you create less than a one mono layer at least one atom to chahiye par. So we do not know what is so we will do something else I cannot create silicon dioxide then what else okay. So circuit people gave some hints so we use that technology okay. So lithography is separating the two lines okay. Generally we actually shine light so light wavelength decide how much separation because the optics has its own laws. So the minimum feature which I can separate or create is essentially the limit of lithography and we are gone from optical lithography even now we are doing it to some extent electron beam lithography, x-ray lithography and finally uh, ion beam lithography. So the, right now we are still working on optical lithography even for 16 nanometer process which has a wavelength of light used is 190 nanometers and still able to actually get your features of 16 nanometers which is great we will tell you this is what lithography is all about. Then there is a P PVDs physical vapor deposition you can heat the material in the vacuum either evaporate the material or sputter the metal we will see things worse. Then you will have to remove certain areas to create different parts P channel P area N area oxide non oxide so you need to etch so there can be solution based wet etching or dry etching by plasmas so to pattern the area. Then there will be impurity incorporation which may be due to diffusion or implants and they need they will create defects you need some thermal processes called annealing which actually modifies modifies the material itself p channel p device n device or others and finally we will require many instruments for both optical as well as electrical measurements which is called characterization. In fact IIT Bombay has the best uh, characterization lab uh, in the most Indian universities IITs, IISC no one has as good a characterization lab as we have and we believe that that is good enough because we can get devices from somewhere and can still characterize and still publish great paper okay. Making small diode is not easy but characterize anyone else's device is very relatively because you know the process. Uh, okay, we will come back to it later. The first question was asked is transistor a good switch and if it is not technologically what do I do okay, that it makes a good switch okay. Thank you very much for the day.